Welcome to everybody around the world for the second game in the Commonwealth Bank Series. England 1-0 up. Should be a ripper here at the Sydney Cricket Ground. Andrew Flintoff has won the toss. England are batting first. The players are out in the middle. A full house today at the Sydney Cricket Ground. This is a sellout. In the commentary box, Ian Chappell, Michael Slater and Bill Laurie. Thank you, Mark, and good afternoon to all our viewers. Certainly a good toss for England to win. It's bright and sunny here, around about 25 degrees. England one up in the series, as Mark has already pointed out, and good opportunity here for Joyce and Roy to get them away to a good start. It looks to be a good, hard pitch, fast outfield, good seeing day, and a wonderful atmosphere. Good afternoon, guys. Afternoon, Bill. Afternoon to everyone who's tuned in. I'm sure there's Australians right around the country who are on the edge of their seats already, nervous about what's about to unfold. You could almost feel the nerves from Andrew Simons out there. He's pumped up. He'll be wishing he was out there. But uh, fortunately, we've got access to him again in the commentary box. So he'll give us great insight as the day unfolds. And Brett Lee is going to take the new ball. So it's uh, an exciting match, second final. One thing Australia have to achieve, achieve that is a victory. Hey, Joyce on strike. Lee from the round again. Yeah, I'm just wondering. Oh, there's hesitation now with the running after uh, a sloppy throw from the Australians. Yeah, I'm just wondering if uh, Joyce taking strike to Brett Lee is a planned move from England because if Loy is going to continue playing that uh, sweep shot, I think his chances of succeeding against Brett Lee are minimal. But Nathan Bracken, he's got a chance if the ball's swinging towards leg of just helping it on its way. Oops, it would have been a bit of strife if he picked it up, Brett Lee. He's such a good athlete. He fumbled, but Joyce was really putting in the big ones, and they're on the board, England. The second final at the Sydney Cricket Ground, the Commonwealth Bank Series, England winning the toss. Perfect conditions for both teams. It's going to be Bracken from the members' end. Breeze uh, coming across from uh, square leg to point, so he should swing the ball away from Ed Joyce. Just for two slips in for Bracken. What a strong breeze. And Bracken actually pushing into what appears to be an easterly breeze, coming quite strongly across the ground. Short, he doesn't quite time, but gets us through cover. Outfield fast, lightning fast. That's unbelievable if he's made it. This will be a third umpire decision. Daryl Harper. Mike Hussey not sure whether he was touching the rope when he was making contact with the ball. That's what the third umpire is going to be looking for. If any part of the body is uh, on the rope as he makes contact with the ball, four runs well played it's down the hill back and chasing you won't get near it look out for some boundaries today this ground's lightning fast as it should be for a final fair to both teams it's a nice size cricket ground the Sydney cricket ground it's well played straight into the turf four runs yeah, and if it is on the slower side, it appears to be out there. That one has just sat up. So Brett Lee paying the price for this being too short. And Ed Joyce just had to roll with that one. Pace of the outfield will do the rest. So at the moment, it's a, a one-man band. He's on 10. He's faced 11 deliveries. No! It's none for 12. Nathan Bracken, he's got it away, that's what was needed, as Ian Chappell said, he is a good pull of the ball, that was a genuine pull shot, it was fraction short from Bracken, and the boundaries are starting to flow for England, a good start. Well that's one the Australians probably need to avoid, because he does play the pull shot well, Mal Lloyd, it's the one traditional cricket shot that he's hit well. He hasn't cut with any authority at all, so if you're going to bang it in short, you're probably better off bang it in short outside off stump which Bracken has basically tried to do I think that's a very good shot
important shot, though, for Mal Loy. He would have been feeling the pressure, given he hadn't scored for a number of deliveries. And he's watching his opening partner at the other end. He's just doing it easily. Through. That's four. He's got the cover job working, Mal Loy. Fine shot. No ball in the four off the over so far. This is good for England. Well played. Down the hill. Parks to chase it. Four more. Seven overs gone. One for 29. That's a good shot. There's no one on that leg side but a man behind square. Anything a bit short will be dealt with like that. That'll be out. Oh, great catch. It's got him. Brad Hodge again. Went slowly, but Hodge had a lot of work to do, and he did it really well. You beauty. It's just what we needed. England didn't. They've got a few on the board. One for 34. High bouncer is what they needed. No control in the shot, no power, but plenty of control and power by Hodge. Two hands with great security at mid-wicket. McGrath smiles again. One for 34. This would be a great contest, this. Ian Bell batting at number three for England. He's going to face Glenn McGrath. For those who watched the first final two nights ago, it was Ian Bell was dropped by Glenn McGrath in the deep and on 18 went on to make 75 in the game that made Glenn less than happy put it that way he's got a chance to uh, redeem himself today McGrath's got rid of Ed Joyce and now he'll bowl to Bell no! straight away Ian Bell walking across in front of his stumps but that really was a good bouncer that McGrath bowled to Joyce got it nice and high Joyce couldn't keep it down. I suppose you, you say that his strength can be a downfall as well. Probably a little bit of overconfidence maybe. He's, he's played a couple of good pull shots today. And as you say, Tub, that was high. He spliced the bat. And Hodgie's all over that. That's safe. And would probably be four. It wasn't quite out of the middle of the bat, but it is so quick, even on the long side of the ground, which is on that western side, it still made the boundary easily. Actually skipped the first bounce. It really skidded off. So Brett Lee had kept it tight. Then he decides, after a no ball, to get a little bit impatient, and Loy was onto it. Watch that bounce. Oof, hard as a rock. That's nicely timed. Attempted Yorker from McGrath and he's dug it out and punched it down the ground for four. Hey, well, it'll be wide, that one. Yeah, that was what he was aggravated about the other night. That we got such a good start and um, we sort of did capitulate a bit. We didn't put another decent partnership together, which, which would have made it really hard going for England. And that was his disappointment, but he's, been, he's vented that. I've always known what they've got to do tonight. Well, they were two of the greatest comebacks in modern times in that game by England. That one with the ball, 6 for 33 in the last eight overs, and then from 3 for 15 to get over the line with the bat. Going back onto the batting in that game, I know you shouldn't point the finger at anyone, but you got Ricky Ponting and Matthew Hayden both made 75 and 82 in that game, I think. They both get out sort of together, and no one else really makes a contribution apart from Michael Clark who made 30. It, it must, mustn't be easy for those blokes coming in down the order though, to keep that sort of run rate going. Yeah, I mean, the, the other thing is, with it is, Tub, I don't know if we should be talking about this, but I was very disappointed in how Brad Hodge was given out. That was a... Catch him? No, over and four. Brad Hodge, you know, he got a bad decision and... You know, that doesn't help you in that situation. You know, we needed to push on then. Uh, you know, we lost one of our best and one of our key players in the middle order there. So, 
but you can't, I suppose, go around complaining about that. That's the game, that's sport, that happens. I think the most disappointing thing, just from Ricky Ponting's point of view, would have been the fact that you lost wickets together. You lost Hayden and Ponting together, and then Michael Clark got run out, and Hussey went next ball. You lost key players together in that, in that setting of a target. Yeah. That could well be four more. That's an even better shot. Previous one was premeditated, that certainly wasn't. 158 after 14. Cracking shot, that's a beautiful shot, that's the best he's played. It was wide, it was falling, that's a perfect square drive. Superb batting. He's got to do more of that, uh, Mal Loy. He's picked in this side primarily as a batsman who can get things moving at the start of the uh, innings. He hasn't really done that. Just starting to uh, explore a few more opportunities. There he goes, he gets it away. 4-1, 6, going all the way. The ropes in at 3 metres. That's what's needed for England. Well, he's got to do it uh, on a fairly regular basis because of uh, what Mark Taylor just highlighted. He doesn't work the ball and pick up singles. So if he's not playing his couple of shots uh, successfully, he's then uh, he's a problem for England and also for his partner. It's a nice score in the Commonwealth Bank series. It was well timed. He took it way up off stump. Tommy squeezes a square, should get two. He'll be with a single. Nine for the over, one for 75. Here he goes, and it's safe. That's four more. And they're after him. That's straight to mid-off and well fielded. We well, were talking about Mal Loy last over and how he sort of premeditates that slog sweep to the onside. And we've got a bit of a, a split screen for you here that will show you that it doesn't really matter where the ball is. On the left, you've got a square drive, a ball that's, well, fairly wide. On the right, it's the slog sweep, and it's actually even wider than the one on the uh, that's hit through the offside. So, really, that slog sweep is a premeditated shot. fielding well Loy who's been a bit of a danger man out there 45 off 61 decided to call because it was definitely his call he uh, got his head down but a direct hit he just can't take uh, chances against this Australian fielding side this is a result of being on off on off and now they're back out there and it's a real lack of concentration a loss of flow from a batting partnership and the mistake has been made really difficult for the batting side when you're coming off because of inclement weather and then all of a sudden you're out there you've got to switch back on England two for 79 right, well there we are the bail off uh, Gilchrist adopting that uh, old-fashioned approach to it it stays behind the stumps so that if the ball hits the stumps there's uh, absolutely no time lost at all so Andrew Strauss now is the new batsman England have lost two wickets two for 79 and uh, Bell out there on 11 of 27 Strauss has just joined him in the centre a big mistake for England the lack of concentration or just not being able to get back into the flow of things given everything is running nicely for England up to this stage but Matthew Hayden performing the direct hit it wasn't really a half chance this was it a, a half decent throw would have had Loy out it was just poor running but the batsman didn't come out switched on the fielders did oh and it's gone straight through him well, there's no doubt that uh, 
And there's a little bit of dampness out there, and the ball now slowing up as well, just before it reaches the boundary, and they'll run four anyhow. Six, and a run out in the over. It's two for ready Oh, he's got him. That's out caught behind. A huge nick. A huge nick there, Strauss. Well, it's a good delivery, actually. It bounced a little bit. There was a little bit of movement, I think, if anything, off the seam in the direction of the slip cordon. And uh, what a wicket this is. Two quick wickets. Well, finally, the Aussies can bowl to some convention. Mal Loy has gone. The big slog sweep is gone. Strauss playing with a straight bat. Nick's one that zips off the seam and through to the gloves of Gilchrist. Three for 86. Perfect if you're an Australian supporter. Paul Collingwood, the hero of um, East England side down in uh, Melbourne, played wonderful innings. Oh, it's sort of waves a man at long on. They should get two. Four throw. This is their chance. The sun breaking through, the spinner coming on. Fast outfield. Play some shots there. Take hog to the cleaners if you can. Well, I think uh, the fact that Ricky Ponting brought Hussey on, I think he might be trying to get a few of Hogg's overs out of the way, just in case the ball is a bit wet and it's hard for him to grip. Bowling, George. Yeah, I think he's maybe worried about Watson too. Five overs for 30. I think he wouldn't mind having a couple of Watsons done. Also, he might have learned something from England using Ravi Bopara here 10 days ago on this pitch, who bowls around the same pace as Hussey and bowled quite effectively that night. Just little medium dobbers that swing a bit. There's no doubt the pitch is slow-ish. And I guess, as we've said quite a lot during this series, you take the pace off the ball. It's a bit harder to hit, particularly with the white ball as it gets softer. And older and a bit darker. Collingwood in tremendous form, 200s on the trot. He's uh, 10 off 19. Bell 26 off 45 at the non striker's end. Oh, he could be in trouble. Ah! He's gone! Hussey, in fact, got him. Bowles has been there for a long time. It was a dicey call to pick up and throw, and he's gone. Hussey hasn't got the strongest of arms, but it's pretty accurate. A little bit of concern there, and he is. He's well and truly gone, Bell. So Hussey has done the job. Well, all credit to Australia. They've hit the stumps a fantastic amount of times today. They've now got two runouts on the board. They've hit the stumps four times in all. They deserve it. If you're this sharp and this accurate, the practice is paying off for them. England in strife suddenly. Poor call, Collingwood. Put his partner really under the hammer. He'd make him back up further these days. It was a quick, hard push, and the angle was there for Hussey. He did well, admittedly. But, uh, you don't want to run out of guy that's been there for that period of time. Well established. Watch him here. He pushes. He pushes it softly in the middle of it. Hussey's got the angle. Look at that. Turns and bang. He's gone. It's brilliant field. They are superb in the field. Simons is not playing. In steps Hussey. Four for 112. Andrew Flint off the crease. Hog bowls to him. Works it for single. Maybe two, but they'll be very careful now. Two run outs in the final. Brilliant work by Michael Hussey, but the angle was there for him. Collingwood pushed it softly enough, but Hussey had a nice angle. Great shot. It's wide of. Oh, but that's what you've got to do. Everything just a fraction short. Pounced on it, pulled it away. Good shot. He's a man in form. Looked very confident right from the start. He, he even walked across to off stump and flicked Nathan Bracken through the onside. He's, a, he's very much a bottom hand player, Paul Collingwood. That helps in playing the pull shots. The man has now been pushed back 
just in front of the square leg umpire out on the boundary. He's a good walker, worker of the ball on the onside too. He with that gap now for one or a two. He finds it. He may get two. It's soft hands. There he comes. That's excellent cricket. Intelligent cricket. What did someone say the other day? The heart of a lion and the head of a thinker. After uh, his magnificent century in the final. And uh, the other thing about him is we know he's very fit. Centuries, uh, two centuries in succession. And he's going to be expected to do a lot more here again for England. So Ponting comes out of slip and goes to mid-wicket. Try and cut off the single now. So there's no slip in. And that's brilliant batting. Four to a single. It is, isn't it? When we think back to the 100 the other day, England three for 15, and then Collingwood unbeaten when the 252 that Australia made was passed by England. And it was a faultless innings. Gets the bottom edge. The bar dies, there's four. It's a good over two from Bert Lieber. You can see it's six. 29 gone, four for 137. Well, for 148, it will be McGrath to continue. There's that ball worked on the leg side. Look for two again here, Collingwood. And he's coming back. Good running. Good judge of a run, it's Paul Collingwood. Just takes enough pace off the ball to allow him the chance of getting two. Well, that was brilliant work by Collingwood because he realised instantly that Bracken was going towards uh, the right spot for his throwing arm, a left-hander, and he still managed to get through. Very hard to set a field with that sort of batting. <laughs> Quick apology there from Ricky Bonin. Little flick throw. And he picked up his opposite number. Thirty-three. Final 10 overs, and that's why the 300 total came back to 250. Got to go, and uh, he gets there in the end. Flintoff, but if England can stay or keep this partnership intact, particularly Flintoff, we haven't seen him run into those last five overs where he can really tee off, he could get them to 260, 270. Well, I think he's got to tee off now. He can't let Hussey go unpunished at this stage with six wickets in hand. This is it's well home. Hussey drops short, he'll, he'll belt it for sure. He's been there long enough. He's 32 off 44 right. with just the one boundary. He's been very watchful and rightly so. Now's his chance. There he goes, and he finds a gap at midweek, and that's four, and that's intelligent batting. The pressure comes on Australia. Try to get through a part-time over. And Flintoff won't let you do it easily. Slower ball. Not slow off the bat. Six off three. He'll be looking for more boundaries here, Flintoff, particularly if he drops short. Squeezes out to cover. Just a single. Benefit of the boundary already now. There's seven off, two balls remaining. A look at the uh, heave ho to the onside, but he was targeting that vacant area. The only dilemma with that is if he doesn't get enough elevation or the direction is slightly wrong, there is a man in that vicinity. Home with sweeps, sweeps nicely, and it's four. That's beautifully placed. There's a man at mid wicket and backward square brings up the 50. Paul Pinewood on fire in the Carlton Oaks. The Carlton Oaks series. What a run Paul Collingwood is having now. He went through a very difficult patch for the middle part of this tour, and he's finishing at the business end. Can he create the fairy tale for England? Can they win this Commonwealth Bank trophy? They certainly can. He goes again, and it, this time it just cut off. 
Comes up to 200. We're pushing the button. The accelerator's down and Australia on the back foot. No doubt about that. and he caught it as clean as the whistle. Well, we saw how hard the, the first ball with this new ball went to the fence. It's come out of the middle again. Straight at Bradley, had no choice but to get hands on it. And he held it. You're kidding. You are kidding. Flint off stands. Can't believe it. But has to go just as he was getting into the swing of things. He's gone for 42. Still in disbelief. That was a superb catch. We're looking for two here, just single because it's taunting on the fence. Oh, dear. Winter couldn't believe it. His reaction is priceless because he smashed that. That is uh, straight out of the middle. And all you can do as a batsman is just shake your head and go, well, the car made the mistake of hitting it in the air, but that is unlucky. So important from the Australian point of view. And for 42 or 50 flint off. Now Rimple's got to keep it moving here. Give him that strike as possible to Collingwood on 57. He's lost his big hitter, Collingwood. That's a problem for England. Sweeps. Sweeps nicely. Do you think it changes the role of Collingwood now? Now that Flintoff's back in the pavilion, he's almost got to up the ante. Flintoff had that ability. But now it's Collingwood's got to play that role? Not to 46 or 47. He can't go now. If they lose Collingwood now, they could crumble. He needs to be there at the end of 50, Collingwood. Wide ball. I reckon he's still got to lift it a little bit just with singles and twos, Collingwood. He's been bowled to very well of recent times. Brett Lee, here's the reaction times. 145 Ks onto the bat. Probably about a. 120 off the bat we've worked it out 120 k's oh. which means he's in his follow through him and he's, he's running let's say at 15 k's now in with his head down oh oh and he's got it unbelievable Collingwood does well, finds the gap, they'll get at least two. Six off the over so far, they need a boundary, England. 47th over, Paul Collingwood's moved to 70 off 89 with just two fours. Another superb knock. Controlled the middle order completely. shot just saying how well he's playing he goes a reverse sweep off the last ball of the 47th over and he's caught behind for 70. Collingwood wasn't that keen to go maybe because he can't believe he's out he's had such a run of form there was a deflection was it that or was it Tad? it's the reverse sweep right off the face of the Slazenger. Gilchrist says yes you beauty Bracken at the end of a good over picks up the big wicket which might stymie a very flourishing finish. Six for 231. Paul Nixon, what can he do tonight? He'll be busy. The other end, Dale Rimple, has got to go now. He'll be playing conventional shots, find the gaps, find a boundary or two. McGrath got a wicket from the last ball of his test match career on the SCG. He's got a chance to bowl this over very well. Then bowl the last, and he might have the same chance. A little bit of a reverse swing, get the Yorker right, make it hard to score, and see what you can create. There's no third man in. There's a point and a long off on the 
defence on the offside for Maguire. He hits it because he does it. Nixon makes it. Nixon may be the danger man here. At least he'll try and give it the full face of the bat. And we saw him work it the other night on both the off and on sides. Enjoying his cricket at the moment, the England wicket keeper. Is he gone? Yes, he was. That is such good bowling by McGrath, though. First ball back into the attack. Dalrymple is one that does show the full face of the bat, and he just can't get it because the Yorkers are being delivered in the last three overs. One of those players that if you're playing against, because he's so vocal, he can be annoying, but I think he's brilliant for his team. Someone out there chatting away, keeping everyone up. It's a charge. I should get two. No, he sends him back. He's done him like a dinner. Oh, terrible cricket for Nixon. He went and he sent back Dal Rental, and he should be very, very angry. Don't underestimate the value of this run out either. He's a good hitter and he's gone. The Australians are bowling well, but it only takes a little slip up for a score to go from 230 to 265. This is really beneficial to their cause. He sends him back. Dalrymple doesn't see that Nixon's not coming. Gilchrist takes it really well. And Australia keep the lid on again. Seven for 233. William Plunkett at the crease. Can they be bowled out for 245? 47.3 overs gone. Now Rimple's run out for five off ten. Plunkett on strike to McGrath. Full pitch. Oh, brilliant. Absolutely brilliant, Ricky Ponting. Three run outs so far in this innings and a great save. They've been slick in the field. They've really lifted their game. And it's not just for half of the innings. It's right the way through, right to the death. Every chance there'll be another run out. Look at this. Ponting, full stretch. And doesn't just bump the ball down, gets hold of it. Here, here, the boy from Naramine, Ua Glenn McGrath. Six deliveries to go in his international career in Australia, finishing at his home ground. What are the odds of a wicket on the final ball? Bang, that's well struck. They hit Plunkett as well on the way through, just a single. Better clarify that at this venue because Australia win tonight, we're off to Adelaide, so it's not in Australia. His last uh, bowling in Australia. Given that one final to go, Australia have got to get there. What a career. It was Uwa, now it's au revoir. Plunk it goes straight. I'll pick up two. Well fielded. Clark knocks it down. Defending brilliantly the Australians in the final overs. Good bowling. There's been three run outs in the innings. Hayden, Hussey and Hodge doing a great job in the field as well. This is a beautiful save. Desperation. Knocks it back. Bang, that's safe, that'll be two more. And loads of work for Michael Clark to do at long on. Helping out Glenn McGrath, keeping the boundary out of the picture. Didn't get hold of it on that occasion, Plunkett. So McGrath, three deliveries to go up the SCG. I still reckon he's going to get a wicket in the final ball. I reckon he'll get one before that too. Plunkett. Slow ball, bang down the ground, just a single. He may come back here. No, he doesn't. Two balls to come from McGrath and from Australia. Well, he won't get a wicket that way, will he? A low full toss. It's hard for the batsman to get a top edge to sky it, get it to the fielder's hands, but. It's the way he's got a bowl. He's got protection down the ground. Look to Nixon. He's got, he's got four, three men up in the circle behind the batsman. 
all the protection is down the ground. Nixon has to go big here, can't hang around. He goes wide, he'll get two. So one ball remaining for Glenn McGrath and Australia. Not a bad score though, England, getting close to 250. They need a boundary here. But they're competitive, don't worry about that. All the pressure is on Australia. See the crowd all standing, all rising here at the SCG. And the chain will be up shortly. Uwe Glenn McGrath. Nixon chips and chips. The Sydney cricket ground, 50 overs gone, 8 for 246. What a way to end a great career at the Sydney cricket ground. Well, once a legend, always a legend. Glenn McGrath into the beauty. You just sensed it was going to be a dynamic finish. His home ground, all standing. And well deserved. Great on and off the field, Glenn McGrath. Magnificent cricketer who's finished with two for 41 off 10. As Hodge takes the straightforward catch, Nixon's gone for six, and this is a special moment for all cricketers. I think Hodge had to get his hands ready for it too. He didn't want to put that one down. Full toss, Nixon hits it down his throat. McGrath walks off with the ball. Goosebumps everywhere. That last delivery is something so special. It's a grand final win. Well played, Glenn McGrath. Well played, Australia in the end. 50 overs gone. 8 for 246. There's the last delivery. He went for the full toss. He didn't really go hard enough for Nixon. Oh, it was a man cool in a crisis, really. He wouldn't want to drop that. You could never predict that you're going to get a wicket on the last ball of your one day Sydney career with a full toss about a foot outside leg stump. But he's done it. The breakdown of the innings, the real standout again was Paul Collingwood instigating a big partnership with Flintoff. A good start by Mal Loy at the top of the uh, order as well. So Australia need 247 runs for victory. England will be uh, feeling they can create some nerves and some pressure on Australia in the run chase. Join us again shortly. Well, welcome back to the Sydney Cricket Ground. That's the scene here. Still a few uh, darkish-looking clouds uh, surrounding the ground, but uh, I think we're going to be all right for a while. And that's the man that Australia will be hoping to get him off to a fly. Adam Gilchrist, old first ball by this man a couple of weeks ago. Not today. Liam Plunkett rolling a big in-swinging Yorker here about ten days ago, knocked him over. That was the perfect start for England after they'd made 292 in that game. Here they've made 246. It was a similar sort of delivery on that occasion, but the line just not quite right. Matthew Hayden has run into some very good form of late, as good as I've seen him play in a one-day game uh, for quite some time at the MCG the other night. Well, that's also a wide, way down the leg side. They're obviously trying to get that swing going again. And it took a little bit of time to adjust to the swing in the last match. Well, that's how England uh, set the target. Loy 45, and then Collingwood once again 70 off 90. Good contribution from Flintoff. Big run out of Bell. Hussey producing a direct hit. It was very handy for Australia. And Glenn McGrath, wicket with his last ball at the SCG, 2 for 41 from his 10. So Plunkett. That's better, that's on target. 
Yes, what a roar went up as Glenn McGrath ran into bowl. His last ball here. Everyone on their feet. It was absolutely something else. And then, of course, to get a wicket on top of uh, all that, all that emotion. And then they cheered him every step of the way off the ground. Wonderful. Those trivia buffs will be making note of that, won't they? Who was the bowler who took the last wicket? Well, took a wicket with his last ball of Test cricket and One Day cricket here at the SCG. And the answer will be Glenn McGrath in years to come. definitely slowed the field it was amazingly quick when we started play here today some boundaries in the early overs when Loy and Joyce were batting and so that's the batting order Ponting Clark Hodge Hussey and uh, Watson playing here so they all rounded down the order oh that's gonna go for four surely and he bowled out there and Adam Gilchrist will uh, well, he'll give you a chance, I suppose, but the chances are it'll go for four. And Plunkett uh, looking to get that late in swinger to give Gilchrist trouble and then vary it with the occasional one angled across. Looked as though he was trying to angle that one across Gilchrist, but just gave him enough room to smash it. Already a short cover now going in for Adam Gilchrist. Man has come out of the slip area, catching cover. Yep. He just takes the pressure off in the early in the over, Adam Gilchrist, when he bats at the top of the order. He does this so often, hits a boundary in the first couple of balls of the over, and then the rest of the over, unless he gets a real bad one. Just what they just work for singles and pick up eight to nine runs off and over with just one big shot like that. Still pitching outside leg stump. Well, the big difference between Gilchrist and Adam Loy is that uh, basically Gilchrist hits traditional cricket shots for four that's where I think uh, Loy has a bit of a problem he he started later in his innings to uh, to hit some traditional shots to the boundary but early on he was just relying on um, on that sweep shot and, and missing other opportunities for boundaries Lunkus one man who's really grabbed his opportunity it came very late in in the tour spent uh, well must have been a good two two and a half months just uh, going around on buses and running out drinks couldn't have been much fun at all but uh, all credit to the young man he was ready when they gave him the opportunity and last few games he's been very impressive Of uh, around the 140 mark, which uh, makes him quite sippy, and uh, oh, there he is, Monty down the boundary. Oh, it's uh, over the top, over the top for four. Oh, good delivery, too. So now we get for 25 start here by the Australians oh he's got him he's got him caught it short extra cover well Collingwood there taking another good one that uh, was hit very firmly at him nicely taken 
And, uh, well, Mahmood has struck, and Collingwood the catch-up. Well, he's, he's another one who's come of age a bit uh, in the last couple of weeks, I think. It's very good slower ball, well disguised, and Collingwood, what a contributor he's been for England in the last three or four games. He's in everything, but Mahmood, he is maturing as a fast bowler. He's got pace, and he's got a good slower delivery, and he's accounted for Hayden. It's one for 25. Ricky Ponting, the new batsman. Average of uh, 42. And uh, a very good strike rate. Right, well, Ponting now on strike. This is the fourth over. Oh, and what a good start. What a good start. Up and straight, and uh, Ponting treats it on its merits. And uh, just firmly enough to take to the boundary for four. He's in the form of his life so far this season, as is Ricky Ponting. We saw this in Melbourne a couple of nights ago when he made 100 against New Zealand. He came out and hit the first couple of balls just like that. Beautiful straight bat. It's like he's been out there for 45 minutes getting used to it. It's not really a half folly, it just punches it down the ground for four. That's got him, yes, he's got him, it's just carried. That's an excellent catch. The ball went low, but it kept going. A classical outswinger's wicket. And oh boy, game on here. England already 1-0 up. Could they take it out tonight? Well, that's a tough delivery for a right-hander, particularly early in your innings. If you get a bowler like Plunkett who can make it go late, and he made that one go late. Strauss, well, he's struggling for runs, but he's been hanging on to the catches, and that's a pretty important one for England. Good piece of bowling by Plunkett. Australia in trouble at two for 33. Right, so Michael Clark now is uh, out there. 2 for 33, 4.2 overs have been bowled. Right, so here we go. Good pace and bounce with the next one. Yeah, it's uh, one of those things uh, where mathematics, when it gets into the game, makes it a bit difficult. Now here's the first ball on resumption. Liam Plunkett. Ball in! Liam Plunkett! With a wonderful in-swinger. What a huge wreck wicket. Now England lost a wicket straight after a rain break earlier. Mal Loy was run out, first ball, and now straight after another rain break, Adam Gilchrist goes. Whatever Deja it is, that's it. Almost identical from uh, the other day with Gilchrist and Plunkett. And what a breakthrough for England, 3 for 39. Oh, dropped it! Dropped it! The flying Collingwood. Difficult chance, big gap between first and second slip. Oh, having a few bob each way with the positioning of that second slip, looking to cover ground on the right and the left. Hodge was lucky, he got it far enough left for not even Collingwood to hang on to it. What a let off. This is how he got Ponting out as well. Now he's troubling the outside edge of Hodge. Well, I know there's a lot of theory about this uh, with modern-day captaincy that you spread your slip fielders, but why? Collingwood made some pretty good ground to his left side, his elite good side. 
ball was a good pace too. Got him! What bowling from Liam Plunkett. Laid out swing goes for Michael Clarke. Brilliant stuff. Brilliant. Three of the tightest huddles I've seen England perform all summer. The scene magnificent. Again, it swings just enough. The seam is important for that ball to swing either way, whichever way it's pointed towards. And Plunkett picks up a biggie. Nought, four for 40. Michael Hussey comes to the crease and it's nothing short of a crisis for Australia. Four for 40. The most dramatic first over back that you could imagine. Plunkett strikes twice and they're not ordinary strikes either. He does for Gilchrist and for Clark. Hodges oh. dropped. Unbelievable drama at the Sydney Cricket Ground. Good stroke from Brad Hodge. What about that for a response? Well, let's hope it's going to be a counter-attack night. They're going to attack as the greatest form of defence. Hodge onto it. Mahmood not swinging it like Plunkett. Scrambles a leg cutter out there. Head high, beautifully controlled. England putting up a terrific fight here. Yeah. Well, it's tight, really tight, but it's probably five. Mm, it might be five. I think the umpires will want another look at that. The issue is whether the boundary fielder was in touch with the rope while he was in touch with the ball. Sanj Mahmood did all he could to pull that up. He isn't there, but is he there? I reckon so. Well, he's a bit unlucky. It was a hell of a save for a start, and then the bits and pieces, and nothing went right for him. I love the total effort in this play of cricket. In this piece of play. Joyce with the throw, pushed it wide. The batsman head down, just making it in. The backer up, Dalrymple, a full dive, and now Mahmood <laughs> couldn't make any bigger effort of that. Power plays tonight, one block of five overs to be taken at the discretion of the fielding side. Now the other one is just a single over. So it's really one power play in a bit. As Brad Hodge easily pulls for four again. quickly into position and uh, will give Australia hope as Ian Chappell, Michael Slater and Mark Taylor come into the country. Thank you Mark. Yes, he looks in good touch. Matt Hodge given the life before he'd scored. It's a third slip, tough one. Dropped at third slip by Paul Collingwood. And since then he's looked in pretty good nick. That's his second boundary. He's already 16. He's trying to resurrect the ship. That's close. Very close. A couple of noises that may have saved Brad Hodge. I'm not convinced, though, it was bat on ball. May well have been bat on boot, but there was two noises. Yeah, and that was the confusion for Steve Davis. Straight away he said not out. He heard the two noises, but it was a, a risky foot movement from Hodge, really climbing in front of the stumps. We'll have a look at uh, hot spot, and you can see the deviation as well as see that inside edge I'm sure there's a hot spot on there good decision that's through the offside now that's a lovely shot from Brad Hodge and he's away now two pull shots and now the cover drive Hodge can be the hero for Australia in all sorts of trouble and yet he's out there now playing his shots in a free-flowing style Pull shot, now a glorious cover drive. And just open the blade to find that gap. 
So it's a good counter-attack to a, against a bowler who's bowling extremely well. Oh, now it's on the onside. This is an exhibition from Hodge. Brilliant stroke play. The captain struck Australia in all sorts of trouble at five for 63. Well, Strauss uh, is struggling to make runs, but he's hanging on to the catches. It was always a bit of a problem for Australia that they'd lost four wickets before Flintoff came into the attack. Flintoff has been bowling very well lately. Just a little bit of laid out swing there for him, and it's caught the edge of the bat. And boy, haven't things turned around for Andrew Flintoff in the last 10 days. Hussey is gone. Australia 5 for 63. Shane Watson is the new man and he comes in with Australia in all sorts of trouble. The run rate at the moment is pretty good. It's up to about five and a half runs per over, but they're five wickets down. Shane Watson in the side mainly for his batting. And he will be tested tonight. Well, I can't believe what's unfolding. Australia were challenged at the MCG. They were controlling that game. Several times through the first final, they controlled it, let it go. And here in Sydney, well, they're being run over by England. They did well to achieve a, a chaseable total. But the batsmen are failing. And it's all down to the pressure that England are placing on them. The swinging ball early. Well, you think, uh, you think back to the 2005 Ashes series and, and what was it that uh, England used to beat Australia, basically? I mean, if, if you're talking about winning a Test series, you've got to be talking about how you bowl the opposition out because you don't get the 20 wickets, you don't win Test matches. And it was the swinging ball that England won with in 2005. They've suddenly discovered the art again here with the white ball and they're doing serious damage again. Oh, he shortens him up. Full safely. Flintoff is steaming in at the moment. Only around Nasty. about 145 k's. Too quick for Watson. Yeah, he's lucky that didn't propel out to that man there. Ed Joyce was sort of coming, rushing in, but this has surprised him. Awkward position. Lucky that that handle is in between the ball and the helmet. Fired up, isn't he, Freddie? That's good bowling. That's a wicket maiden for the captain. Five for 63, Australia. That's a lovely shot. That's four. That'll do the world for the confidence of Shane Watson. I suppose you never write off the Australians while well, it's looking grim. A few more shots like this from Watson, and if Hodge continues to go at the other end, you just never know. That's true as well. I think you can be sure of the Australians won't give up. Two boundaries in the over to Watson. Oh, for 77. Uh, goes for it, there's a man out there, sets us all the way. The message was go, Australia, go. And that's quite right. They're chasing 211. They can't worry about the 18 overs. So Tanisar's locked it down the ground for a massive six. Where's this come from? He's played and missed the last four balls, Shane Watson, and then bang, the middle of the bat. Cameron White's done the trick. We just have to go. We need 128 off 90 until then. Good thinking from Ricky Ponting. Full pitch, missed time, gets four. Maybe. Balls running, running, running. Yes. 10 off two. Well, it certainly improves the equation. The rate required at 8.2. I've seen Shane Watson play an extraordinary one day innings in a semi final for Hampshire where he made 150 and played strokes from the gods. He's got it in him to do remarkable things. 
There won't be a better time. For all England's rushing, they too must retain perspective. They've still got to bowl good balls. Catch it! Catch it to cry. And he has! And he has the ripple! You beauty! That's a ripper of a catch. We won't have another segment of classic catches, but if we did have, this would be your winner. That's an extraordinary performance. He hung in the air. What's more, he caught it with his left hand. His weaker hand. That's a phenomenal grab. Oh. <laughs> One of the great catches. Yes, that lead took a goodie, but it wasn't as good as that because that was under real pressure. And Watson's gone for 37. 21 overs gone, 6 for 109. Eighty-five or fifty-four, and uh, that is the Balmy Army down there. They uh, used to fill a stand here, and uh, now they um, well, quite so many are there. I reckon they jumped on a plane Saturday. Well, Saturday morning, just got here. I reckon after England won the first final. Well, it was a good effort from uh, Monty Tanisar because generally the Australians will take one on his arm. Well, Brad Hodge now on strike for Australia and he needs to farm the strike from here on in. The run rate required is up getting towards 10 runs per over. Hodges made a run of ball 41. That's also very well bowled from Paul Collingwood. I think he may have sensed that Brad Hodges looking to pull that away to the leg side. Put the back leg across and cleared the left front leg. Looking for one of those Jacob Oram type shots. Something to the leg side. He fired it wide of off stump. Good bowling. This is definitely still gettable for Australia. Uh, just got to keep their heads and uh, they can win the match. He's hit that one and uh, it's just short. Just short of the boundary down there, a bit of wicket, but right under the middle of the bat. There we are. Four of uh, a couple of boundaries and over. We'll change things a bit. 79 or 51. And it works the same way. If England lose their heads and don't bowl well, then we'll be in Adelaide. Well, that's in the air, and this is going to be out. Yes, he's gone. Vintoff takes the catch. And Hogg is on his way. And that is not a very sensible stroke because it's going to make uh, the target harder loses a wicket when uh, Brad Hogg could have put to single and given Hodge the strike and it's 7 for 132 no trouble at all there 7 for 132 that gap is opening up and uh, it just seems that there's a little bit of drizzle in the air so at the moment they need 78 or 48 and if it rains I don't think uh, it's going to suit Australia but those of you are probably thinking oh, it'll be a draw well it won't be um, the fact of the matter is if, it, uh, if it's rained off now England will win oh he's hit that one that's going to go all the way is it yes well now can they just do something we've seen some magical things happen on occasions uh, in cricket matches and uh, could this just be one of those occasions. Well, Flindorf taken the gamble to bring back uh, Dalrymple, partly because of the overs situation, how many overs each bowler can bowl, and Hodges decided to target him, and so is Lee. Cuts it! In the air, yes, and he's got him. Flat as attack, Bell takes the catch. It 
really did come out of the middle of the bat. It was straight. It was uh, very, very firmly hit. But uh, it was easily caught as well. Well, that's uh, a huge blow now. Hodge, the man out, caught by Bell off the bowling of Dalrymple. Well, that's obviously the reason he was brought back into the attack. He's got rid of Bradley Hodge. One six, a dot ball, and then a bullet to extra cover. I think he's hit pretty well by Hodge, but picked out Ian Bell. And that toss in the air suggests that England now feel they've got the Commonwealth Bank trophy. Hodge has gone for 49. Australia 8 for 139. It's uh, going to go to the boundary as well, is it? I think it probably is, yes. Mahmood diving full length. And uh, that one cleaning up absolutely everything down there on the boundary. And that's going straight down the ground, and that's four as well. Oh. Well, there's one off the hope, Tony, and that's beautiful striking by Brett Lee. They need to get the taseman back on quickly, because he does like the medium paces. We've seen uh, Brett Lee on occasions uh, hit very, very strongly. Oh, he's going for it again. That's uh, up in the air, but it's going to land safely. They come back for the second. Bracken thinks about the third, but they decide against it quite rightly. It's eight for 152. Well, now the umpires um, are getting together and uh, the covers are going onto the ground. They needed to be 8 for 188. If there's no further play, then England will win. When everyone back in their living rooms and in the commentary box just starts marvelling at uh, what's happened to England and how they've improved, not least of the things that has happened to them they suddenly looked as though they could field there were times during the test series and in the early part of uh, the Commonwealth Bank series when you simply wouldn't have believed they knew anything about fielding maybe one or two people will be asking the question of Australia in this election maybe yeah, I think that's uh, that's probably also a fair point. Um, the, uh, the Australian selectors have uh, obviously decided to rest um, some of their players from time to time, bowlers in particular. Hello again from the Sydney Cricket Ground. And news has just broken that the match has been abandoned. The players won't have time to get out again because of this heavy rain. And consequently, England have won the day and they've won the Commonwealth Bank Series finals by two to nothing. The supporters are going off, so will the players be in the dressing rooms. It's a very special thing to come here and win in Melbourne and Sydney and beat a very powerful Australian side and to do so after some of the disasters that have gone on throughout this tour, some of the heavy defeats, the massive disappointments, the sickening moments that have afflicted the England side, to come out and show the character and spirit and no little skill to actually win the series finals against the Australians, albeit this evening in a truncated match